Hello everyone, welcome back to more Let's Play Dark Sun, The Shattered Lands. Now when we were last together, we escaped the sewers, and we ended up in the fields of draw, but we were eventually able to find our way out of there, and we got to our first bit of the wasteland. And we found this dead body over here, it had a scroll on it, saying that the armies of draw were about to march out into the desert and wipe out every village, every slave village out in the wastes. This guy, well, this guy didn't seem to care. And this, this lizard lady is wandering around looking for a new tribe. But we were told if we went north, we could find a new town. And if you decide to go north, we can get there. No, you don't, you have no clue where you're going, do you? Alright, let's leave the area. Holt, what's your business here in the quest? Well, I'm Kamar. Yeah, what's that supposed to mean to me? I want to speak to your leader. Yeah, what do you want to talk to him for? Well, it's not really a business proposition. And it is his business. Let's just call it a personal matter. If you say so. Council meets in the main hall. Big building on the north side of town. Can't miss it. Chal, our leader, will be there. What do you know about the village leader? Our leader, Chal, takes care of us well enough. A little slow on the uptake, but he's a stout one. No mistake. What do you mean, slow? Just say he'll never be a sage. It bothers some people, but not me. A strong start arm is what a leader needs. Been enough for because <clears throat> a strong sword arm is what a leader needs. Been enough for Tequesa so far. Why is Chal the leader? Chal founded the village, escaped from slavery in Nebony, across the Salt Sea. Nebony. Oh, I think I got that one right. To get here, can't do that without being good. He's the best warrior here, and that's enough. Okay, tell us about your village. We're more prosperous than many slave villages. But if you believe the visionary, we won't last much longer. Who's the visionary? He's a crazed halfling. Child found him stumbling about the desert and the lunatic's been ranting ever since. Okay, what does the visionary say? Go talk to Chal about it. I don't listen to visionary's blustering. None of it's true. Draw isn't going to waste the effort on slight villages way out in the desert. Yeah, that's not exactly the case. Why is the village prosperous? Water enough for everyone, that's why. You must have heard of our well. Domini built it. When Tequesa was founded, it's never failed. Who's Domini? Domini's the well master, who oversees the water distribution and keeps up the wellhead. He's a genius in his own way, and very proud of the well. He's always tinkering with it. Goodbye. So here we are in our first village, and, oh, here we go, this is another one of those obelisks. If we take a look at our map, we kind of get a rundown of it. Now here is the main hall where he was talking about, so we're going to go here and talk to these people. In fact, you know what, I think we'll do that first and foremost. We'll check out the village afterwards. Mar, what are you doing? There's their well. Okay, let's say hello to their council. You see, the visionary was right. Here are the ones who fulfilled the prophecy. Tequizel will survive. Who are these heroes? I am Shaw, leader of Tequizel. We've been waiting for you. I'm Kamar. I'm honored, Kamar. We have names to match the pictures that the visionary drew. What are you talking about? The visionary's prophecy. The Quetzal is doomed, but you. What our noble leader means to say is that a prophecy of doom is upon the Quetzal. You fit the prophecy's description. 
You are the heroes who will save Quetzal. Just like the visionary said. Um, why should I help you? You must help. You are our only chance, the visionary says. Don't help us. Athos is a cruel world. Everyone for himself. The Quetzal survived before you arrived and will do so after you leave. Why do you keep interrupting, Chal? Not everyone in the village shares Chal's beliefs, even though he's our leader. I have merely voiced the concerns of those who disagree. And who are you? I'm Quirin, Chief Lieutenant here in Tequesel. Quirin, okay. Another one I'm not sure if I got right. Don't listen to him. Quirin is just jealous. Now tell me about this prophecy. A visionary can better tell you his prophecies. What's important is that an army will soon destroy Tequesel and all the desert villages. He says the ruins will stretch from the Silt Sea to beyond the Badlands. Uh, where does the army come from? The visionary didn't say exactly. I suppose the army will come from Dra. Dra is the only place able to field an army as big as the visionary describes. But I have heard nothing to indict a war, or rather, indicate a war. Caravans of weapons have already gone to Dra. War preparations are going on right now. Um, how long until this happens? The visionary is unsure, but it can't be far off. Why do you believe the prophecy? The predictions are always true, and now you are here. There can be no doubt. Not all of us believe. I say to Quetzal, do better to take care of its own concerns instead of worrying about the world. If the world fails about our ears, do you think we can survive? Now tell me about the visionary. He found him in the desert, tortured by his visions and half crazed from sunstroke. After he regained his health, he went into a trance and revealed his prophecy. Okay, where do I find the visionary? The visionary's house is just northeast of the front gate. And who is the visionary? No one knows exactly, not even the visionary. The sun, or his vision, has burned away much of his memory. What do you want me to do? We can't fight Draw alone. Our only hope is to join the other ex-gladiator villages. We must convince those villages to join us. Alright. Why do you think an alliance will work? We don't have a choice. The villages are easy prey to draw by themselves. The visionary says <clears throat> the visionary also says a great uprising from the desert will defeat the army. Others of us, though, believe it is better to be independent and able to move quickly. Move quickly, yes, but move to make this an alliance and prepare for war. Okay, where are the villages? We don't know. The villages mostly keep to themselves. Perhaps you could try to find a caravan. They might know. I heard there was one to the north. Okay, and what do I get out of this? Quetzal isn't a wealthy village, but we will give you what we can. Sure, I will help you. And everybody gets 1,500 experience points. Excellent. This is the best news we've had in a long time. Make sure you visit the Visionary. He will give you aid to your mission. You will also find gifts in your house, a second one to the southeast. So yeah, we have our own house in the village now, where we can come and rest anytime we like. Um, what should I do? You must visit the other villages and convince their leaders to ally with us. Uh, what help can you offer? We'll try to gather information about Draw's movements while you are gathering allies, and, of course, we'll house and feed you. We will house and feed those you do make. <clears throat> we will house and feed those you do make. If you want to speak to me or my lieutenant privately, we will be in the homes on either side of this meeting hall. The council will see your needs and reward you if each alliance is sealed. Good luck. Alright, well they got a little treasure chest here, but we can't play with it. So let's talk to the council members a little bit. Now, there's two of them, but I'm pretty sure they have the same things to say. Is there any news on about the war? Very little news reaches us, and the visionary cannot see everything. How long until Draw's army marches? The visionary is unsure, but it can't be very far off. Is there any news on the Alliance? We've had no luck at all. 
cannot gather allies for us. If you cannot gather allies for us, we are certainly doomed. And what are our chances of victory? The visionary says our chances are small, but with you seeking allies for us, I'm sure the odds will improve. Alright, well, goodbye. Let's go check out our house. Now, if we take a look at the map, it's this one over here. It has all the treasure chests in it. It also has a fire ring. Now, I rested recently, so we shouldn't need to now. The little treasure chests we can take. We're actually just going to open them up and see what's inside. The big treasure chests, on the other hand, stay where they are. But they have goodies in them. In fact, each time we get a new village to join us, there'll be new goodies in the treasure chests. Alright, so we just picked up a magic sword and some magic arrows. Okay, a plus two swift bite. I'm thinking either Holton or Zontora should get that. Zontora, what have you got? Holton has a magic axe. Get the whole thing. Now we got people to talk to, but visionary should be really close. Come on, come on. You have come. The shadows of my visions are flesh. The veil is lifted to reveal the face of freedom. And this guy's kind of got an ultimate warrior kind of thing going on. wonder if maybe I should try to imitate the warrior. Maybe, maybe just a little bit. I was told you would give me a gift. Ah, I do, yes. Something to aid you in your travels. A magic rod to take you where the stones have life. Uh, how do I use this rod? Retrieve the sparkling hearts of the standing stones. With their life return, the stones will... The stones can call to you. In ignorance, Kinsel's heart was cast down the watery shaft. What are you trying to... What are you trying to say? Believe his trusting soul, and easily abused. Um, who are you? I am the voice, you are the hand. Take hold your doom before the wolf devours the land. You're the voice of what? The voice of the wind that blows away obscuring sand and breathes life into the shadows. What wolf are you talking about? Jealous of the moon's sway, the wolf gorges on their brilliance and endless gluttony. Now the feast is spread, his prey at hand. And why do you call me the hand? Dread hand held high to stay the axe's fall. Each star, each moon, all one fearful symmetry. Um, what are you talking about? Walk the narrow path. Your fate demands you seek forgotten ways. Gather to your breast the foes of hateful fear. What is my fate? Your fate to tame the winds of change or be flung from the precipice. Teetering on the edge, you must forge. Support, lest you fall. Um, thank you, goodbye. Lost in the whirling sands, the wolf makes no demands. Well, that's the visionary. Visionary is kind of mad, but the visionary actually has more of an idea of what's going on than he lets on. Now, the visionary also has these bones over here. And if we play with them, we can get different effects to happen. Kumar shakes the bones and lets them fall where they may. The visionary peers over to study them. Fate smiles on your fortune this turn, as you can see. Though, ill fortune no doubt awaits you too. So because we play with the bones, he just told us that we're going to have good fortune and we're going to have bad fortune, which is going to manifest itself at some point while we're playing. 
I don't remember exactly how it is, but I think it's stuff like bonuses and penalties when we try to do things. You know, since we're over here, let's talk to the Wellmaster. Hello, Traveler. Help yourself to some water. The well's never dry, and the water's never muddy. I'm Kamar. Glad to meet you, Kamar. I hear you're going to help us against draw. We're all quite grateful. Uh, who are you? I'm Domini, the Wellmaster. Uh, what are you doing? I'm making a new bucket. No one leaks. I'm not about to allow that kind of waste. Uh, tell me about the well. My well may be humble to look at, but there's none finer. It's watered to Quezzel since the first stone was laid and will keep on flowing when we're all dust. Well, how do you know the well won't run dry? One plot of desert may look like another to most, but the shape of the dunes and the texture of the sand tells me what's underneath. There's not just more sand at the no, of course not. There's layers of clay under the sand here. What keeps the water flowing? Just to the west, it looks like a heap of jumbled stones barely covered by the sand. I don't know what that could be. Have you heard any rumors about the war? A train of wagons passed through the other day, heading southeast. I couldn't tell from the wall if it was a caravan or a war party. But I did see some warriors scouting its flanks. You know the village as well. Can't get no water without talking to me. Besides, I've been here since the beginning. I've seen many of them grow up. Okay, uh, is Chal a good leader? There are worse leaders to be had. At least Chal keeps us safe from marauders. He's a good fighter. Maybe that's all we need. Um, how about the lieutenant? I don't know much about Kerwin. He mostly keeps to himself, and that's fine with me. You sound dissatisfied with Chal. Nah, Charles is just not the most inspiring of leaders. Quetzal could do with some change. Keep us from stagnating. What do you know about the visionary? He's crazy. Least ways I can understand the word of that gibbering he spouts. He does have a way of keeping about him, though. Just the other day, he kept the well from getting clogged with sand. Hmm, how did the visionary save the well? He covered the well with planks of wood and wouldn't let me move them. Got me mad at the time, but next day the wind piled sand right over the well wall. Hmm. Are you worried about fighting Draw? I say it's time we fall back. We lived in fear of Draw for so long we've forgotten how to resist. The Templars count on that to keep their power. Were you here when the Quetzal was founded? I was the one who chose where to build the village. More villagers than not get swallowed by the desert because of their well gives out. And Chal wasn't going to let that happen to Quetzal. Alright, well, we can actually go and play with the well. And if we wanted to, we could climb down it now. But we're going to save that for a little later. Now, yeah, the visionary told us to go down the well because that's where the heart for the stone was, meaning the big gem for the obelisk. But we're not going to do that just yet. Here's the bower. Greetings, my fine friends. Can I interest you in archery supplies? Yeah, show me your goods. Here, inspect them as you please. You will not find a faster bow anywhere, which will improve your range better than draw weight. Now, he's got some very simple things here, most of which we got no use for. Although, if we want, we can get more ammunition. We are going to sell him our gems, though. Remember me if you ever need archery supplies. Is that your target over there? Yeah, I set that up so my customers can see the quality of my goods for themselves. You're welcome to use any time. Excuse me. But I have some bows to rest through, to restring. Goodbye. Good luck in your adventures. But we can actually play with his target. I'm going to try to get it as far away as I can while still able to shoot at it. Not Kamar's shot flies high. Flies wide. Straight into the sand. We're not doing so good. Because actually, if we can tag... There we go. 
Kamar hits it right in the center of the target. Center shot! I haven't seen shooting like that in ages. Here, I give you these arrows in recognition of your fine marksmanship. So he just gave us some magic arrows. Plus two wooden arrows. Alright, let's see if we can combine them. Those are plus three. Now this is the magic rod we got earlier. We can use that to teleport. We can only teleport to areas where we put the gemstone in the obelisk. And right now that's only the fields. So. There's a few more people worth talking to, so let's talk to them as quick as we can. We'll start with the lieutenant. There are a few more shops here. There's a weapon shop that doesn't have impressive weapons. And there's a armor shop that isn't selling armor yet. Let's talk to Lieutenant Kerwin. What is it, Kamar? I have only a few minutes to spare before I need to get back to work. Um, what work is so important? If Tequezel is to prosper, a market area must be built to attract caravans. Fields must be planted and goods made so we have a surplus to trade. This won't happen on its own. Hmm. What kind of trading would you do? You buy raw materials like obsidian or wood from the caravans, make tools and such with it, and sell the finished products back to the caravans. Why would caravans deal with you? I control the only reliable well in the area. The caravans will come for that if nothing else. And if I trade water for materials, my profits will soar. Hmm, but isn't Tequizel already prosperous? That's the attitude of a dog following its dying master. And too many people here have it. Never be satisfied. That's the only way you don't get ahead in this life. You talk as if you were Tequizel's leader. I'll become leader soon enough. Something you would do well to remember. Alright, what's wrong with Shaw being the leader? This village needs fresh idea. Fresh ideas. Shaw thinks it's enough to build walls and put bread on the table. That's fine if you're a stupid mole. There are better things in life. Why don't you challenge Shaw now? Why would I do that? Old age will take care of Shaw. I am neither an impatient man, nor one to take unnecessary risks. Okay, why do you think you should be the leader? I'll bring wealth to this sun-bleached village. Wealth to the village? Or to yourself? It is the same thing. If I am wealthy, the villages will live better. And they will make their own money as well. Alright. Well, why don't you tell me a bit about yourself, Kerwin? My life is none of your business. Alright. Well, let's be a little aggressive and I make it my business. Threaten me all you want, but the villagers will kill you the moment you draw your sword, and no prophecy is going to stop them. Why are you so bel belligerent? I don't like you. You crawl in from the desert and expect everyone to bow to your wishes just because some sunstruck visionary calls you heroes. Mercenaries will not like it. Alright, well what about the war? What war? The only one I've heard about is inside the visionary's head. And what do you know about the visionary? I know he's mad and that's enough. All you have to do is listen to his ravings. He stirs up the villagers when they better things to, when they do better to keep their minds on their work. I must get back to work now. Goodbye. Well, not a not exactly a pleasant fellow. But you know what? He's got some good decent ideas. No, I don't think he can open his treasure chest. I think that's just for display. So let's go talk to the actual leader. And he's got some weird looking stuff in here. His bag though we can actually take. So let's grab it. Treasure chest, not so much. But he's, look at this, he's got a big dagger, an axe, some sort of stone club, and this big old ring. What do you want to talk about, Kamar? 
Um, tell me about yourself. There's nothing to tell. A mole's life is as dull as they come. Hmm. No, that's not what other people say. Let's try this. The scars on your face argue differently. Your charisma is persuasive enough to overcome the child's reluctance to speak for himself. Kamara receives 200 experience points. I guess I do have a few scars. But I didn't get them doing heroics or anything. How did you get the scars? Crossing the Sea of Silt. A Templar had it in for me. The only way I could escape was to lose myself in a dust storm. I got the scars convincing a giant to carry me through the silt. How'd you convince the giant? I challenged him to a contest of blows and somehow put him out. But not before his stony fists gave me a new face. Is that how you got all the giant weapons? I stayed with some giants on their island in the Sea of Silt. I guess they came to respect me and gave me these gifts when I left. Why was a Templar chasing you? I was her slave, and she didn't like the idea of me wandering off. What's the life in Nebony like? I was a slave in Nebony. That should tell you enough about my life there. Excuse me, I must work on preparing my village for the war. Goodbye. Well, you can actually talk to him a little more. We did the most important thing. Uh, do you think we can win the war? We've got a tough fight ahead of us. There's no denying it. But once you've made some allies, we'll be able to hold our own against Dra. Hmm. Okay, what is our strategy? We fight until the army is defeated, or until we're dead. The determination to fight and die is strategy enough. It'll make us stronger than any complicated times. What is the Dra Drajian army up to? There's no troop movements that we've been seeing. <clears throat> There's no troop movements that we've... Hang on. There's no troop movements that that have been seen. That'll change soon enough. Uh, tell me about the village. It's like the other villages, I guess. Everyone has their... Everyone here has felt the Slave Master's whip and risked their lives to escape it. Is Kirwin to be the next leader? I'm not dead yet. And when I am, the villagers can decide who will lead them. I guess I am old enough for people to be thinking about it, though. Especially the war threatening. Alright, would Kerwin make a good leader? The lieutenant's plenty smart, but I think he cares too much about himself. The leader has to be ready to make sacrifices for the good of the village. Who do you think should lead to Quetzal? I don't know. I choose somebody like you, Kamar. A villager the villagers need a leader they can count on to protect them. Okay, what do you make of the visionary? I don't understand magic, and don't pretend to. All I know is the things he says comes true. Alright, do you understand what the visionary says? My council spends a lot of time discussing the visionary's words. But it's not so much what he says as what he sees. Our sight and his are not the same. Okay, and how are the villagers doing? The visionary's prophecies worry them. They'll come around as soon as you bring in some allies. They will have died as slaves if they weren't good folk. Alright, goodbye. Alright, well, that is almost everyone. Now, where is the weapon shop? There he is. Hello, I'm glad you came to me. I stock a variety of weapons. I'm sure you'll find something to your liking. Now, unfortunately, we are not going to find anything to our liking. We have better stuff all around. The only thing that might be worth taking is the metal sword. We're going to get something better than metal swords soon anyways, but... Might as well. Remember me if you ever need weaponry. There's only one person left to see, and that's this preserver. Actually, I don't know if he's a preserver. I think he's a priest, actually. Father Garland. I am Father Garland, cleric of this village. How can I help you? I am Kamar. 
It's an honor to meet you, Kamal. The visionary has spoken a great deal about you. Hmm. I would ask your advice, Father. Of course, I'm at your service. What do you want to talk about? Well, let's ask about the visionary first. He's become a good friend of mine, and I can tell you he's a seer of great power. Do not let his odd manner disturb you. Many truths are entwined in his bright ravings. Alright, tell me about the Quezal's leader. The child, like most moles, is a simple soul. No offense intended, Holton. Yeah, that's right, Holton's a mole too. Raised from birth to be a Templar's bodyguard, everything he does is motivated by a desire to protect. Is he a good leader? Many times, Chala kept Quezal from harm out of sheer determination, standing firm against heavy odds. It is no surprise that Quezal is the center of resistance against Ra. How does his protective spirit serve him? It is his greatest strength, though his single-mindedness makes him short-sighted. It has caused him trouble more than once. What trouble did it cause? In Ebony, Chal's master gave him a girl child to protect. But when she proclaimed the trial for a ritual, Chal defied her. The idea of willing placing his charge in peril was too much. How, I don't know, but he survived the Templar's wrath and brought the child to safety. Hmm, what happened to the child? She lives with us to this day. Her name is Katora, and Chal has made her his adopted daughter. I do not think he ever revealed to her the whole story of her parentage. Uh, tell me about the Templar who rolled Chal. I have forgotten her name, as Chal does not like to speak of her. Apparently, she was a close advisor to the Shadow King of Ebony, and steeped in the rites of evil. Okay, how about the lieutenant? I'm not one for politics, so Corwin and I have little contact. He is the one responsible for Tequezel's prosperity. He is an ambitious man, though, not to be crossed lightly. Why don't you tell us about yourself? There is little to tell. I am a humble cleric, trying to keep this village healthy. And what elemental sphere do you worship? The elemental sphere of water is the focus of my devotion. Its life-giving properties are a great boon, enabling me to serve the Quezal to its finest, or rather to its fullest. Do you keep the water, the well water flowing? Domini the Wellmaster is the one to thank for that. He has a great affinity for water, and would make a powerful cleric if you weren't so enamored by his mechanical devices. Um, what's that contraption by the wall? I'm pretty sure he's talking about this stuff. Produces an extract of great restorative value. However, I do not have the rank meat of True Pith that I used to make the extract. Can you go to my supplier and retrieve the order I placed with him? Yeah, sure, we'd be glad to help. We could do some side quests. You are most kind. Notaku, my supplier, is usually found southeast of Tequesel, where the sands turn red. He will give you the rank meat of True Pith I need. Are you busy? The village seems small. My work is never done. A sandstorm swept through recently, leaving dozens of people sandblasted. Others were attacked by Doom Reapers. The list is endless. Yeah, Doom Reapers are not pleasant. How long have you lived here? Since Shal founded it many years ago. It was I, in fact, who healed the wounds he suffered while escaping slavery, though he bears the scar still. Health and warm life to you, friend. Goodbye. Alright, well, that's just about everyone worthwhile to talk to. But we've got an idea of what to do. We have to go and start finding villages to join us. We also have a side quest if we go northeast of here. Now, the Lizard Woman also mentioned she was looking for a new tribe, so that's a side quest as well. Alright, there's a few monsters. Some Doom Reapers. And, ooh, what are these? They're either Fire Eels or Boulettes. Well, I'm just about at the point where we're ready to call it an episode. But, why don't we get a little fighting in just for the fun of it?
my Dune Reapers are bad enough, but they're close. So let's deal with them first. Maybe the Lizard Woman will help us. Oh, we want to be careful. We don't want her to die. Oof. Hit us hard. Let's see if we can troll one of them. Nah, it doesn't look like it. Alright, good. We finally put one down. Alright, he's on Torah. Show them how it's done. Holton's all right. Now Holton gained the level, so I guess he's okay. Where are you going? All right, good. All killed up. Let's see if those are uh, fire eels or if those are bullets. Those are bullets. Well, then we're probably all going to die. Oh, there they are. Fire eels. Fire eels we can probably handle. Good spell to throw at them. Right, let's do what we usually do. Try to control one of their bodies. Yeah, fire eels are not nearly as dangerous as some of the other enemies that we've had to deal with. Okay. Well, I think that is going to do it. I'm just going to rest again, because hey, why not? And when we get together next time, we'll start exploring the wasteland and see what we can find. So, I thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next episode. Take care.